So Lisa's going to pull out a 30 blade. And the reason we generally use a 30 under the clip-on combs is it gives you the, the best cut for most coat types. So it, it really kind of leaves the coat that nice plushy feel. Um, and we're going to start with the, the we don't want to eat, we want an A comb, which is the lavender comb. All right, Lisa, make a swipe. Let's see what we do. All right. All right, come here, Judy. Judy, Judy, Judy. It's okay. So I'm going to start first right down the middle of her back. And I think that's going to leave her a nice length. And take some of that down. We don't need to leave all this back here. And by Lisa clearing off the hip area, it's it's going to make her look like she's got the body she really does have <laughs> underneath okay. the hair. Oh, it's all right, honey. Hi, pretty girl. <laughs> okay, so let's turn her a so little it, bit. It, it's been a while since she's been groomed, and you can tell by the way she's trying to move away from the clipper that she's she doesn't have a lot of confidence in what we're doing. But the more we work with her, the more hands-on we have. And you notice Lisa's not taking her other hand off the dog. This no. is going to give her more comfort as Lisa works on her. It's going to make her feel more relaxed. So as she keeps going through the dog, she's going to build more confidence. And I, I just want her to know that, you know, that we're here for her. You know, we're here to support her and it's okay. I'm going to roll my, my side up just a little bit and come down the side. I think we should keep her in this little terrier trim. I think she's going to look cute. She'll look very cute. So you're going to do a carry head then? Yep. Yeah. Why not? So Lisa, Lisa made an executive decision that we're going to make her look more like a carry blue terrier than a poodle. Um, and, and it works out real good if they've got the proper body shape and stuff. And as you can see, as we're getting the hair off of her, um, it, it, kind of pulling together. So I think that's going to be a good choice for her. You know, and, and if a client gives you that opportunity to do whatever you want, go for it. Don't just say, oh, I'll just cut it down and call it a day. If you know that that dog is going to look cute in a different pattern style or even like a different breed, go for it. Show off your artistic ability. That's where pulling out one of your grooming books or the AKC Breed Standard Book, you pull that out and you start looking at pictures and you can kind of match up something different and really put your own stamp on it. All right, you cut down the other side. All right. So we're gonna flip her around. Now we're gonna do this side. And again, putting that, that confident feel on her, keeping your hand on her at all times is going to really help build her confidence. And the more we do that, the more relaxed she's going to feel on the table. And that's very important. We want her to feel at ease. We want her to accept her grooming. You know, she's in a strange place. She's on a strange table. This is stuff she doesn't know. We're strange people to her. We've never seen her. So we just want her to feel comfortable. Now we're not going to go up into the neck area yet because we're going to need to set that transition so that we can make her look like the little Carrie Blue she's going to look like. And she's got perfect coloring for it, too. She is a nice slate blue. Get the shape of your back legs. Get your angulation cut in. And all of that you can do with your clipper. You don't have to do, do that all by scissor work. You can do it with your clipper and get it all, all clipped in. 
This makes your job go a little bit faster. We're not gonna come up the tail yet because we're gonna need to balance that out with, with her body. You do good. So once we get this big fluffy part cut off, then we're gonna move in to do some of our detail work. Which blade do you want to move to next? Why, uh, how about we do the chest? You want to take that off with this too and not tire? Yeah. Okay. No, we'll take it off with that first, see how that's that's looking. Your clipper doesn't want to work now. What'd you do? Did I don't it, know. Did it get unplugged? No. Sue broke my clipper. It is it's just does it's just don't want to work. Oh no. All right, that's okay. We'll we'll switch. We'll switch clippers. It'll be a little quieter anyway. So we're going to move to the Cromato and we're going to use the same same blade. It says it don't want to work no more. It's okay. Now as you remove the loop, hang on to the dog so she can't take off on you. Okay, so lift her neck up, come right under her throat, right down into the front legs. I know, we, we have and a, take, we have take all this front She's off. Oh, gotcha. And you're gonna go right into the front no, legs. We'll so because, because we're gonna make her look like a carry blue, we wanna do the same thing you would do with a carry blue. So all this should be blended down into the leg you really shouldn't see a big indent going in into the front part of the leg or the sides. Come straight down. We're going to leave a little bit of forechest. Right to go in between the front legs. Okay. I mean, you can tell that the cut she was in before was like an Asian fusion. It's so we're okay. just going to change her up some. We'll surprise her mama. She'll think she's getting a little terrier back. And she, Judy's going to feel so good. Okay. So let's put her back in the loop. Let's change up what we're doing with the face. Ah. Now, do you want to just do that with a 10? Yep. yep. I'm going to switch to a 10. But I'm not going to take the sides of her face with a 10 because if I do, she's going to look like she's got a little pinhead. But my favorite. Make sure it's on a Get 10. Get rid of the ears. Yes. <laughs> oh, she goes, no. No. She goes, no, I want my ears. It's okay. It's all right, Judy. It's okay, baby girl. No, no it's tassels, okay. no nothing. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. So so if you find you're you're doing something to a dog and they don't like it, desensitize them. Touch them with the clipper till she feels very comfortable. And then you can turn it around and then start clipping. You can tell it's been a while since she's had anything done on her face. Let her sit down. She's starting to relax. Good girl. Good job. Good job. You got this. Good girl. There you go. Good job. All right, let me have this ear back. Hey, there you good go. girl. See, and once you de desensitize them, then you can go back and start clipping. If she starts to act up again, just follow that process again. Good, good job, job, honey. And make sure you praise them. If, if they're doing what you want them to do, praise them. Let them know this is what you're expecting of them. Because if they're... Girl. 
if they're going, if they've gone to obedience or any type of puppy class, when they do what that's asked of them, they're praised and rewarded. It's the same thing when we're doing the grooming. Good job. Good job. It's all right. It's okay. She goes, no, don't flip it over. I don't want it flipped over. You know, and we're, we're used to this. This is what we get in our everyday salons. You know, okay. they, they're not used to being handled. They're not used to the noise. Thank goodness this clipper's very quiet. Not a lot of vibration. But I want her to let her know that, yes, it does vibrate. And that's basically all she's feeling is that vibration of the clipper. So okay. the nice thing Good is, is she does kind of have a ter terrier beard going here. So I can hang on to her beard lightly. Good job. Good job. Good girl. It's okay. okay Good honey. girl. Okay. Good girl. You know, and she, it's not like she has an ear infection or anything else going here. She just doesn't want it clipped. And like I said, Good you know, when, when they go a little bit longer between grooms, they they forget the, the process. So it's almost like you're reintroducing a puppy. Even though she's not a puppy. That's it. Good girl. That's it. Good right. job. Put the, I got to okay. shave just now. I got to shave a little bit more. There we go. Yeah, just Good be careful girl. of that ear flap on the inside when they're squirming around and stuff. You don't want to. If you keep that flat on your hand, you won't have any issues. It's Same okay. thing when I turn the ear over. Right now I have my finger covering it's okay. that. It's okay. You it's got okay. this. You got, you got this. It. You got it. Good girl. She goes, good you shave girl. the outside, that's good enough. And I am not one that if she doesn't like it to stop doing what I'm doing. Because she'll never learn you that. Have, you have to have follow through. Good girl. Good girl. Good job. Good job. Good girl. Good girl. What a good girl. That's it. That's it. That's it. Good job. You're getting Sometimes it. when you're doing this real quick, flip your clipper around to get the other. <laughs> She goes, she, I don't want that part done. Yeah, she does not want the inside part done. She might let you come back to it after you get the yeah. cheeks off. Yeah, I will come of, back to part it. Part of the hair is tickling the inside of the ear, too. So once okay. Lisa gets so that So I want to move. Do you want a two on there or the uh, five? Not yet. I'm going to do underneath. So I want to move this out of my way. Because you, you have to remember, a carry blue has a, has a fall up at the top. Okay, so, so you don't want to take that off with your clipper. I want to remove my grooming loop. Here's her breastbone here. I want to start at about two fingers above the breastbone. Again, I'm doing a 10 in reverse. If it's a dog you're not sure of or it, it hasn't been shaved, switch to like a 7F. Just make sure your skin is very tight so it doesn't get caught there. But this dog has had many different trims on it. And she is a retired show dog, so it, it's just been so long since she's had all this stuff done. Okay, now when I do my underdraw, okay, I like to put my my thumb inside the lip there so it tucks everything in all those little bumps and it comes right up to the canine tooth but this way i don't nick my bottom lip okay so now i have my handle i'm 
match up the other side. Same thing on the other side. And this way, I, too, I get the flues nice and clean. Okay, so I bring it right up to that canine tooth. Nice and clean there. Okay, good girl. Now I need a two blade. All right. Do you want the two or the four, Lisa? Let me have the four. The four is the darker purple one. And it's equivalent to a five F blade. So this way it's going to give her a little more substance on the cheeks. So it doesn't look like, you know, she was like a character in Beetlejuice. She doesn't need a little shrunken head, so. Okay. So again, I want to get the top part of my head out of the way. So she's, she's making the part along the top. Even right at the, the corner top of, of the, the eye. Is going to get clippered too. You don't want to take off yet the hair you might need up there. So I want to go from the corner of the ear, corner of the eye. Good girl. And I just want to take all that off. Doesn't matter if you go against the grain or with the grain, it's going to cut it the same. Now I'm going to come this way. Now it's going to leave me some thinning shear work to blend it in, but I got the majority of that coat off of there. And that's okay if you have to do some of this with your shears or your thinning shears. If, if it's going to give you that look that you're trying to achieve. Okay, so now I'm going to come down with this blade down my shoulder. Now, some of you that are watching the video, we first went over this with the A comb just to kind of set lines. But now Lisa wants to actually accentuate the shoulder area, the front chest area, because this is what drives a terrier. So if we're going to make her look like a little terrier, we have to give her all the attributes that a terrier would have. So now Lisa is going in with the four wall comb, which we just said it was like a five, and we're gonna give her a little bit more muscle. Okay, I wanna come down the front of her front legs just a little bit. They should have their front legs slightly set underneath them. Okay, a lot of your other terriers, they don't have a four chest. It should come straight down, but the carry should have just a slight set of their legs underneath them. But not like a poodle or a bichon. Good girl. Good job, Judy. All righty. Let's see what we got going on on the top of this head here. Good girl, baby. She goes, leave my ears alone. Okay, so let's pull out these bands. Now, by Lisa removing the bands now, it's going to tell her where she needs to set where the fall line goes. So she'll take those out. She'll get it all combed into place. And then she can see what she needs to do to the top of the head. Because I want my fall to start right behind the eye sockets. And you can actually feel that with your hands. Okay, so here's her eye sockets right, right about here. So anything behind that, I'm going to take off. And again, I'm using the wall four snap-on comb, and I'm going to blend it right into her neck. Now, if Lisa was doing an actual carry blue, she'd actually make that a little bit tighter, depending on the shape of the head that, that is on the dog she's working on. And, and it is tailored per dog. That's right. Nothing, nothing is black and white. So my grooming book might say, you know, use 
a four on the top of the head. But if the dog I'm doing has a lot of substance and a lot of bone, I may not leave it that long. I may switch that blade to a 7F. It's okay, Judy. It's okay, honey. Okay, you're okay. She really does not like this side must with. And there could be a lot of reasons for that. Um, it, Past ear infection. Exactly. If she or, had a bad tooth. And because we don't actually know her, we're trying to work with what we've got and just kind of get her through it. Okay, so now we're but starting to look like a see, carry blue. You can see she's up on her leg more. She is feeling more relaxed. And that's a good sign. Yeah, she's not trying to constantly lay down. And the more confident she'll feel, the more relaxed she'll get. And she'll she'll stay standing. She'll she'll actually feel better about herself. Okay, so we have that part kind of set in. We still I still need to get underneath that ear. All yeah. right, buck up, Buttercup. You got this. <laughs> There you go. There Good you girl. go. Good job, baby Good girl. girl. Good girl. If Stay. I hold her, will that help? I'm. What I'm doing now is I'm. I like. I'm hanging onto her beard, and I have my pinky over behind her ear, so it kind of supports all that. Uh uh uh. Stop. It's okay. Had a girl. Good job. And where she is more sensitive to one ear, it usually indicates that something um, went on with this went ear on ball. with that ear at Say, some point. Good girl. And it could, like like Lisa was saying, it could have been as simple as an ear infection, or it could be that she had a bad tooth. It's okay. Good it's girl, okay. you got this. Good job. Good job. Good job. There you go. Good girl. Probably going to cut off all her neck hair doing it this way, but. <laughs> if she's comfortable, we, That's we, it can, exactly. we can fix that. There we go. There. Good job. How about this side now? Because we have job, some. baby girl. Hair there. Yeah, this hair she's much more comfortable with now. The other one she's still guarded. And she, if. if she is guarded about it. She has no choice or no other way of telling you but to fight. And sometimes those are the dogs, too, that show you that they have those underneath their lip. But don't. And she's just telling you that something's up. I don't know how else to communicate it. But don't be so quick to just give it up either. And stop. You need to complete your task. Um, it, it shows her that nothing you're doing hurts her. It's a confidence builder at the end of the day. So as long as you can get it through without her really freaking out, and Lisa did, she did just that. Good job, baby. Okay, you're next. What do you want to do? What, what, what do I need to do? Well, we didn't set in her tail and... All right, so now we're gonna set in her tail. Um, Carries have a carrot scissored tail. I'm going to leave a little bit going up into the body so that we can scissor that all in. But the rest of the top of this is going to come off. She doesn't need a big fluffy tail. Most of your terriers don't require that. And on the back side, I like to shave it about halfway up halfway with the tail. up. I'm, I'm actually going to, because it's been so long, I'm actually going to use a nine instead. Only because we don't know how sensitive she is. But we're going to come up about halfway. We're going to come around the sides just a little bit. Open that tail up. But we're going to leave this to scissor into the body. We're going to clean up around her little poop chute here. I don't like to go totally bare, but we're going to just kind of open that up. 
You want the patch between? Uh huh. Okay, so underneath the rectum, right down to between the back legs, we're just going to make a one swipe and clean that off right underneath. And expose the meatiest part of the thigh. We're going to clean all that out. Now, you don't want to go yet into that whole area. You're just cleaning off this patch, and it's about a width of the blade. Pick up the leg, clean out, like Lisa was saying, the meaty part of the thigh, that thick part right there. Clean that all out. Do the other side. <laughs> And now we need to give her a little bit more angulation. So we're actually going to put the four wall comb back on. We're going to come under the pin bone and we're just going to scoop out. Pop that back up to the 30. We're going to scoop out right under the pin bone. Right down almost to the top of the hock, not all the way. You want to go to the bend and come out. Follow through a little bit on the outside so that when she stands from the side, you can actually see it. If you leave the sides too full, then you can't see what you've done and what you've created. Clean off a little bit more, just again to the top of the hock and then straight off. What you do to one, do to the other as well. Now make sure when you're lifting your leg, you're not lifting it up too high past the, the hip bone. Because if you do, you're causing stress and strain on those muscles and joints. Okay, now that we have that cut in, this area here, we're gonna leave to scissor so that we can pull that all together and pull that tail into the body. We, we don't want it to look like the tail was put on separate. We want it to be an extension of the back and up into the tail. Okay, what do you want her neck set in with? You could probably set the neck in with an E. And if I was doing this dog in competition, I would scissor the neck and the legs in. But since this is a pet trim and she's just here for a pet, I would use an E comb on the legs as well. This way, it, it pulls her together a little bit quicker. You're not wasting all that time scissoring. So again, we're going to take the loop off. We're going to come from the back part of the head down into the withers. And you always want your neck to be a little bit fuller. So we've gone up two blade lengths because we did the body part with the A comb. We're doing the neck with an E. And you're still gonna have to scissor this area in here because remember, Lisa took all this off with the four wall. So we're gonna have to scissor that to blend. All right, Lisa gave me the go ahead to go ahead and do her legs. So we're gonna take these off. It's nice being the boss. Uh, it's only cause she's the baby and she has to be the boss. Don't let her That's kid right. you. You know how the babies of the families are. We're gonna take off some of this under here as well. But see, this is gonna leave her a nice length. She likes to tuck her legs up and that's okay. We can work with that. If you can hold on to her foot, come down this front leg. She's a toy poodle. She doesn't like her front legs done. And if she's pulling and tugging, your clipper just came on all by itself. If she's pulling and tugging, just hold on to the elbow. See, she's very clever. She knows how to tuck it up underneath her. Hold on to the elbow. 
it makes her extend her leg. And don't it's squish okay. her elbow, though. Don't. Yeah, don't squish it. Just you kinda don't hang to. on to it. Just gently hang on to it. No pressure. Good girl. Good girl. You want to do on the inside what you're doing to the outside so that you're keeping this leg like a nice little pillar. And now this back leg too. Take off the inside of the back leg as well. Don't leave all that hair in there. It's a pet trim. You're not looking to get her ready to go in the show ring, but you want her to mock the carry, but she doesn't need all the excess hair either. Okay, now that we've got that done, we're gonna go back to the A comb. And we're just going to smooth out her body just a little bit more from behind the withers. Why don't you comb it all up and use a little bit of misting spray? That's a help grand lift. idea because it'll help lift static. that coat. Today we're using Lisa Leedy's Magic Mist Spray. Um, it's, it's a good all over coat spray. It helps put the coat back into pH balance. It also takes away the static so that you can get it up and get this coat just the right way. Once you do that, come over the body. It also makes your blades glide through. We're gonna roll the side like we did before. Take out that little horseshoe area, right at the groin area. They should have a little bit of a waistline. Okay, meeting up this side. And then we're gonna be ready to scissor. Good job, baby girl. All right. Now we have all that set. Good girl. Good job, baby. So now she's got real nice angulation going on. Her legs are proportionately the right size. They're not too full. I don't know. She kind of looks like elephant feet to me. No, not, not once you trim those little paws around. No, right now, though. Yeah. There we go. All right. 